Hey everybody, Joe Malone here with Dallas Trading Floor. It is Friday, August the 7th, 2020, and uh, the market's off a little bit. Uh, seems like there's been some profit taking going on, and uh, just wanted to uh, just kind of go over the numbers here before we get into it. I've got a kind of a special thing today. I've got a very top rated uh, stock that might be of interest to you. It's in an almost perfect chart pattern getting ready to break out, and it is in the semiconductor space, which is seeing a lot of investment right now. So uh, this is something that you might want to look at. By the way, uh, if you sign up for my free trade alerts, you're going to get a lot of the information that I'm going over here today, and that's on DallasTradingFloor.com. Just uh, go there and uh, put your e uh, email address in there. It's totally free, and you'll be subscribed. And uh, we will be getting you action trade alerts out. We've had some very, very good ones. We had uh, we reissued um, one of our trade alerts for Apple. Uh, there was a lot of demand for it, and uh, you know there's still time for the Apple trade uh, as we are coming into the split for Apple. So kind of a cool thing. Uh, and if you're on if you're on TikTok, the easy way to get onto the list, subscribe is to uh, go to my profile. Hit the link, and you'll be taken directly to the subscription page. Of course, it's all free, and uh, you can uh, you can subscribe that way. By the way, we're on Facebook. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash floor. And by the way, we archive all of our episodes on YouTube. So they're all available on YouTube, and then we're going to be doing also some short videos, uh, possibly some trading on some certain chart patterns and some other good stuff in there. It's totally free again. Also, we are on uh, Periscope at pscp.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor. And we're on Twitch for all the gamers out there at twitch.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor. So let's get into it. All right. Well, um, basically, here's the situation with the market direction. We are still in a confirmed uptrend. Um, basically, the way this works, it's very simple. All you have to do uh, is every day I'm going to show this market trend. This is the time that you want to be long on stocks. We're going into stocks. If the market arrow were to change to this yellow arrow, you would possibly want to be more take a more defensive standpoint. And if it goes red, you want to go into cash. Now, the last time that, that the uh, market trend went red was right before the downturn uh, in late February, and I was warning everyone to get into cash. And as a matter of fact, I don't know if you can see my early TikTok videos, but they all talk about this. Uh, and and by going into cash, you're going to be in a position to possibly short the market and make some money there. But right now, it's very difficult to short the market just because of the situation regarding the market direction. The market direction is up, and uh, it's looking like it's going to be that way for a while. So we want to be careful, and we want to make sure that when we're entering our trades, that uh, we have the stop losses on uh, so that we are uh, protecting ourselves, but we want to be long on the stocks currently. I uh, just wanted to show you the S&P 500. It's at 33345. Uh, that's it's down just slightly. Again, this is the most broad index out there. This follows the S&P 500. This is the spider. This is an ETF which covers the S&P 500. And this is probably the most valuable ETF in the world. It's worth about $220 billion. Many people have their entire retirement savings here. So this is a very important number. It's moved back up very nicely since uh, the lows that we had. Just kind of point it out to you. This low here was made on March 23rd, and then at the day after that, that is when the pumping of the of the economy started from the Federal Reserve. So a lot of the gains that we've had in the last few months have been based on this liquidity that's been inserted into the market. Also, you'll notice with the spider, the this uh, the 50-day moving average, that's the red line here, crosses the 200 day, that's the black line. Whenever you see this in a chart pattern, this is a very bullish sign. So we've been bullish basically on the S&P 500 since June, since the beginning of June. So that's what this chart pattern shows. Also, I'd like to show you the relative strength. It says RS, uh, RS rating 69. What that means is this line here is the average of the S&P. And as of late, as of the last few months, 
the S&P is above its average significantly. So that's a very important uh, thing to note there as well. So we're in an uptrend. That's what that means. Also, uh, most of the investment in the market has been going into the big cap tech stocks, and that's represented by the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100 is the 100 largest stocks that are on the NASDAQ. And it has stocks in there such as Apple, such as Microsoft, but the th more and more because tech is becoming so much so important to the economy you're starting to see some of those stocks also uh, appear in the other lists like the Dow Jones 30. Microsoft and Apple are both on the Dow Jones 30 as well as Intel and IBM so those are some tech stocks that are very big that are also not only on the QQQ but they're also on the um, they're they're also they're also on the Dow Jones. Now the only stock that I mentioned there that's not on the Nasdaq is IBM, but it is a Dow component. There's only 30 stocks in the Dow. Now with the Investco QQQ, it's off today, 4.21. There is profit taking going on today. That's what I think this is signaling. Remember, Fridays typically are down days because options expire on Friday, the weekly ones do. And uh, in some cases, the quarterly ones do too. So there typically is a little bit more buying a uh, selling pressure on Friday than uh, during any other day of the week. So, but I do think that we're seeing some profit taking. We're also seeing some movement out of the very, very strong stocks that have moved up primarily the tech stocks. And I think we're seeing some movement away from that, some profit taking and possibly some balance into, I believe the medical area, which is a very defensive area. And that's one that I see uh, stocks, I uh, see the capital flows too. So interesting on the um, QQQ. Also want to show you the Dow Jones uh, ETF. This is called the Diamond. It is up, uh, but only, it's down, but only slightly, 22 cents at 273. Now the important the important uh, number on this one is about 250 and it's above that. It's also above the 200 day moving average. And as you can see, there is on this 40, this 50 day moving average, it looks like it's just going to cross the, um, the 200 day. Believe it or not, this is a very bullish sign. So it looks like if we continue on this trend and the, um, the, you have what they call the golden cross. That's, that's the uh, 50 day moving above the 200 day. Then we're going to look probably towards the end of the year to see even more, uh, e even, even a better stock market. If that's, uh, that's, that's hard to believe. By the way, the um, the unemployment was less bad, <laughs> if you can believe that, less bad than it should have been. And so that is added some strength. But, you know, there has been some profit taking now that those numbers are in. So kind of important there as well. Um, just wanted to show you really quickly my uh, swing trading portfolio. I have several portfolios. I'm going to try to show you these. Uh, I'm mostly in Tesla currently. I do have a large position in Apple, and I do have a large position in Corvo, and this kind of gives you the idea here. I'm off a little bit on my Tesla, uh, but I've been trading this one, and I've done quite well in it. And on these other positions that I've taken, uh, I am also a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit up on uh, Corvo, about uh, about 9% and about 3% since I, I went into the Apple position. Of course, I've only been in Apple about eight days. Um, also, I want to show you another portfolio that I am going to be featuring exclusively to the Action Trade Alert people. Uh, we haven't set it up yet. This is my GEMS low price stock portfolio. And in this one, I take stocks that typically will start under $10 and I trade them hopefully for success. I have one very big winner in here. It's Blink Charging. I've had it for 22 days. It's up. Uh, it's up quite significantly. I have a profit in it approximately of 81%. Now, uh, I also have gone in heavily today into a stock called Sorrento Therapeutics. I went in with a two full positions. I, I had a first position, full, first full position. I went into this on uh, yesterday, on Thursday. And then I rounded out on, with another full position. So I have 100 shares on this, and I have two full positions on this. This is up about 5% in two days. So I think this is probably doing very well, and hopefully if it shows more strength, I may give a final third 
position. When, you, when you're uh, moving into stocks the way you want to do it, is you want to go in one position, and then if it shows strength, you want to go in with another position, and then possibly three positions maximum. This portfolio is quite small. It is, it's only valued at about um, $6,500. This is, this, uh, this is, this is my, these are all my positions here with the cash here. And I, I have to put a, a total line here, but about $6,500. So for this, uh, for, for this portfolio, we're looking at about eight full positions. So you take 6,500, which would be the value of the portfolio. You divide it by eight. That's going to give you the number of positions that you want to trade. And then when you're going into stock, you either go in with a half position, this is which I did with United Micro. And of course, it's not showing me the love that I'd like to see. Uh, but it, but uh, that's only why I went in with a half position. If a stock you're going into shows you the love that you want, uh, Sorrento Therapeutics definitely was the case there for me, uh, you're going to go in possibly with a full position and then maybe two positions if it's showing a lot of strength. So, uh, but anyways, I'm going to be have, I'm going to create a separate website for this for Action Trade Alert members, and it'll kind of give you a way to trade along with me as we're going forward. So, next one. Um, uh, before and, and this is the last before I get to the questions here, I have an interesting stock. I, it's based at, believe it or not, in Plano, Texas. And we're right close to Plano, Texas here. We're in North Texas. I mean, North Texas. We're in North Texas, but we're also in North Dallas. I'm basically walking distance to the Plano line. It's basically the next block up from where we are here at Dallas Training Floor. And by the way, if you ever want to come by, just give us a call, and uh, I will get, put the number up here for you and make an arrangement and come by and uh, we'd love to meet anybody that uh, wants to take a tour of Dallas trading floor where uh, our phone number is 214-233-5087 and I'm usually here or maybe Merv will answer the line uh, but we love uh, to have people come by that have been watching us on the media platform so we really like that anyways this stock is called diodes symbol d-i-o-d it is in a cup and handle formation. I'm going to show you the next slide on this. I hope you can read this. This is kind of a complicated chart, and sometimes the fidelity is an issue here, but there is a buy point on it, and we're quite close to it. Uh, we're basically uh, just right below the buy point, and uh, the buy point is about at 55, uh, and uh, uh, 55 on that. So this is definitely a watch list. If this breaks through the buy point with strong volume, as it's starting to show here, then this thing may go higher. So this is a company called Diodes. It's based here in Plano, Texas, and it's a large manufacturer of integrated circuits. So it's sort of something that you might be very interested in possibly looking at. Now, we've got some questions. Uh, thank you. Um, cost. Oh, Costco. Okay. Well, let's take a look at Costco. Uh, this is one of my favorite retail stocks. I am not a big fan of retail stocks right now. Based on this pandemic, it's been a little bit tough for them. Um, the thing is, the grocery stores and the, and, the, and the retailers like Costco typically are doing pretty well. And the chart on this is not bad. So let me show you this chart here. And when you're looking to enter a stock, you always want to look at the weekly chart to get an idea of how it is trading. So I'm going to put this Costco chart up here right now. Let's go over it. Um, it's got an 89 composite rating. That's excellent. It's also first in its group, which is the uh, the discount chains group. Uh, quite good on that. We have a very nice pattern. It's it's moved up very strongly uh, today. So this might be something that's worthwhile looking at. But it's off, and as you can see, the volume is down too. So I don't know if this is a buy point here on this. I don't think it is. I think you. I think you're going to have to wait on this one. It's probably. A, uh, it's it's probably a, a watch list wait and see, but let's look at when it's reporting. Uh, you typically, when you move into a stock, you want to go on a good chart pattern, like a cup, a cup with handle, a three-week tight, or maybe a double bottom. Those are all chart patterns, and I'm going to go over those in some of my YouTube videos on kind of what to look for. Um, this uh, basically, what's happened is they're, they're, they 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 reported some good numbers. They're not going to report again until September. Uh, it, until 9.24. Uh, so oh, actually they're coming up on a report. I would not I would be very careful going into the stock because typically a stock will run up right before it, uh, it, it, um, right before it announces its earnings and then it'll drop off. So if you did want to trade this one in anticipation of the movement on, um, 
on earnings, you would buy this now and you would sell it on the 23rd of September, right before earnings. That'd probably give you the best, the best bang for the buck. Um, the interest rate group is okay. It's a 96, but remember there's 197 of these groups. And uh, so it's not in the top third. I typically like, it's just below that. I typically like to buy stocks that are in the top stocks in the top third. So that's kind of my take on Costco, um, COST. So let's see. Uh, tickets, question from TikTok. Just bought Apple calls. Um, that's not a bad idea. Uh, you bought the 516s, uh, the uh, the. The October 16th, uh, 500s. Okay, now here's one thing you got to understand about those calls because uh, Costco, be, you know, don't be surprised when after um, after August 28th, the 500 strike price will adjust to 125. And the reason that it's going to do that is because it's splitting four for one. So you're going to see a change in the strike price on that contract as it as it moves beyond August 28th that's when the that's when the um, that's when the um, uh, that, that's when the split is going to happen remember the announced date for Apple is the 24th of August and you have to be out of record to get that um, on that date and then on the 28th is when the actual shares are going to be uh, distributed now here's one thing Typically, the way stocks trade, uh, you're going to find typically after the announcement and after the the stock has been uh, allocated, you're going to see a drop off on the price as people sell off excess position. Just wanted to be um, totally um, uh, totally on that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, next question: Is Apple down on to profit taking? Well, you know, here's the thing about it. Uh, typically. Um, Apple is going to trade up. It's probably Apple's highest price is going to be the day before the split, which is going to be the 27th of August. Part of the reason that you're seeing a little bit of a fall off here is because there is some profit taking going on. I went into this Apple initially on Friday a week ago, not this Friday, but a week ago Friday. Uh, and uh, after their earnings and they and after their earnings they announced, I went in that morning and I bought. Um, and I bought it 409, and of course it's come up a little bit since then, uh, and I think it's trading in the 450 range, so uh, quite a bit. So I expect it to move back a little bit. There is going to be some profit taking in that, so I don't think that's unusual at all, uh, and it's quite normal that you would see profit taking just because you know people know typically on a strong stock, if the stock is announced a split, then uh, it can be a good time. Um, it, it can be it, it can be a good time to to sell because it's almost always going to go up after announcement of a stock split. Oh, good. And um, so, okay, are, do you still hold Vive? Well, you know, I sold my Vive. Thank you. I think you've been watching for a while. I think that's terrific. I'm glad you do. Uh, I did sell my Vive, and and part of the reason I did sell it was because I had sold an option. And then that option exercised, and the stock was assigned away from me. I like to do that a lot because it kind of locks in the profit if I see a good stock like Vive. Vive has just been tremendous, uh, and it, it's all you know. It continues to be a very, very good stock. So let me see if I can get a chart on Vive uh, right now. Uh, bring that up for you in a second. There we go. All right, and Vive. VEV. This is Viva Systems based in Pleasanton, California. Very interesting company. It's very it's down a bit today. Um, you know, because I do think we're getting we're running in a little bit of headwind on it. Uh, that's not to say it's not a great stock, it still is, but uh, we are running into some of the headwind on this stock, um, Viva Systems. And as you can see, it's moving, it's basically moving right up that. Um, it, it's moving. It's moving right up the 40-day moving average here, and it moved back down. I think we're going to see a little bit of bounce, probably on Monday. This, if you're interested in a quick bounce, I think you know. Let's see how it settles on Monday. It's down $10 a share. There is quite a bit of selling going on, 
So this is a classic profit taking. People that have been in the stock, they're taking profits. And how do I know that? Well, you can see this this uh, red bar down here, and that is uh, is also associated with this. It's not really a gap down. It's not a gap down, but it's a significant uh, reduction. It's three point seven six percent. Um, movement to the downside. This is profit taking, and it, it's totally in character because it's happening on a Friday, which is typically a profit taking day for people that have seen run up in the stocks, and, and a lot of times they rebalance portfolios on today. I um, hope you do. Oh, thank you, man. Your thoughts on? Oh, a, a interesting one on on semiconductor and sp, uh, Virgin Galactic. Okay, great. Well, let's look at. First, I want to look at Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic is a really tough stock to trade because it is highly, highly speculative. It hasn't made any money, and it's in a business that it is not, you know, uh, that, that it possibly is not going to be leading in. I want to show you this chart. I don't think it's a viable chart. Uh, I just want to show you this right now. So I kind of give an idea, June. I appreciate the, the call very, very much. As you can see, we're moving right down to the 40-day moving average. Now, I have been in the stock before, by the way. I was, uh, before the last earnings, I was in it right up to earnings. And basically, on the day of earnings, I ripped out of there. And of course, it fell. This is hot. This is almost always the same. So if you if you learn this pattern, this can be very profitable for you. A highly speculative stock will get bid up right before earnings. And then, when the earnings happen, you want to sell, and then and then basically, it moves back down to earth. Here's the thing about um, about about uh, uh, about uh, this stock, Virgin Galactic. It doesn't have a lot of um, institutional uh, support, so therefore, it tends to be a little bit more volatile, and also it tends to move very much, very much on 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 any kind of news. So this one is not really viable right now. It's not a top in its in its category. It's in a very cool sector. I love the sector, but quite frankly, I wish that I could buy uh, SpaceX because that's obviously a superior company, but you can't. So um, this is sort of a proxy for that kind of investment. So pretty cool idea there as well. Um, okay, so let's see, next one, just uh, just got here. Uh, what stock are you talking about? We were talking about um, Virgin Galactic, SPCE. So this is a Virgin Galactic. This is Richard Branson's company. It's really not, unfortunately, in a viable chart right now. And uh, even though I have owned it in the past, it just doesn't have, it just doesn't set up well enough to buy it. So, so I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, but it's not really viable at this point. But I really appreciate the question on it. Uh, let's look at Wayfair. Uh, Wayfair, of course, is in the online retail space. Very, very good company, uh, and and one that uh, you know I would like to take a quick look at their chart because oh yeah, look at that! Wow, that is terrific. Uh, I'm going to look at the weekly chart. Okay, super duper. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to see some a lot of buying. So let's look at the chart for Wayfair here. Very nice. One, two, three, four base. Okay, it's moved up nicely. Um, yeah, there's definitely buying activity. This is definitely, uh, yeah, this is this is a little bit. It's almost at its all-time high, three hundred nine thirty. So this is a watch list stock. Absolutely, I'd like to see a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of consolidation. But here's the thing about this stock, and I like about this stock: ninety-three percent of the shares in this issue are institutional. So that's extremely good sign. So Wayfair, this is definitely uh, on the watch list and definitely something that you want to look at. It looks like they just declared earnings, and look at that. They're up 313. Uh, on Monday, if this thing settles, you might want to buy it because it's gone through. You, you, you're buying it right before, right after earnings. That's a good sign. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't basically uh, have earnings again until October 31st. So it's definitely in a buy range on Wayfair. So I think this might be a very, very good one, possibly either for to acquire the shares directly or possibly an options play. So I'm going to put this down on my list. It's a possible to see if I can I can put together some option plays on this for everybody on the list. Now, how do you get on the list? That's the most important thing uh, because, you know, I'm talking about it, but you, you definitely want to, to hope I put out trade alerts and I create 
trades, either that I trade or sample trades on this, and uh, I send them out to everybody that's on the list. And it's free, by the way. And the the address to get on there, www.dallastradingfloor.com, and just put in the sign and subscribe. And uh, if it's all free, and if you don't want to subscribe anymore, you can easily um, just cancel the subscription. So it's a free thing, but I put out my trades and my, my trade recommendations. If you're watching me on TikTok, it's super duper easy. All you have to do is go to my profile, hit the link, and you'll be taken directly to the uh, link to sign up to subscribe to Action Trailers. So thanks. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, just got, okay. Oh, hey, sending good fives. Hey, man, thank you. It's Friday. <laughs> we all like Friday. At least I do. I think it's pretty cool. Um, all right. Um, is it time to short SAS? You know, that's a tough question. I don't think it's time to short anything right now. Uh, not because I don't think that these stocks deserve it. Believe me, I think they so really deserve it. But one thing's when you're shorting, you have to be careful because we are in, not in a confirmed. Uh, we're not. We're in a confirmed uptrend. So shorting at this juncture is not uh, necessarily how you want to go about it. I just want to show you the um, the the my chart that I that I that I put out every day that I come on. As you can see, we're in a confirmed uptrend. It is not a good time to short a stock. I'm just saying, even if you are absolutely right, your chances of success are limited because we're in a confirmed uptrend. So, you know, it's the kind of thing where uh, you want to have at least. Uh, we're we're in we're we're, un, um, we're uptrends under pressure or we're in a downtrend before you want to go short. But uh, remember, the chart patterns to short are very different than the ones to to buy uh, in an uptrend. In a shorting pattern is the the head with shoulders pattern, and that's the shorting pattern. But it is not the pattern that we use. There's seven patterns that we use for a confirmed uptrend: cup, cup with handle, uh, double bottom three-week tight, um, consolidation, and that, that kind of thing. And I go, I'm going to be going over these more on my YouTube channel. I'm going to try to make little videos on how to spot these very, very profitable uh, patterns that you can think of. So I don't, so in a long story short, I don't think it's time to uh, short any of these service, the software as a service stocks right now, just because it's, um, you know, it's just not, uh, it's just not time. Okay, so what happened to AYX? Well, let's see. I don't know what happened to AYX. I'm, uh, I will. I want to see myself what happened to AYX. So, let's look. AYX is the symbol. Yes. Ooh, look at that. Nasty. This is a. <laughs> this uh, this everybody is the reason you want to have a. This is why I have the eight percent rule. <laughs> okay, we had a huge sell off here. This is the death. This is a this is a sell this is a sell single okay. What happened is that the chart pattern broke down. We were moving nicely off of this off of this base here this this cup. It wasn't cup with handle, uh, but we unfortunately the chart pattern broke down. Now this is this can happen quite a bit. Chart patterns will break down. It will not move to the next level, and the chart pattern will break down. When it breaks down like this, we always want to have that stop loss set at eight percent below where it's trading at. And now you can, there's a lot of different ways that you can go with a stop loss. Initially, when you go into a stock, you want to set an 8% stop loss by taking whatever you paid for the stock, multiplying that times 0.92. That'll give you the number. So set that in good to cancel. As the stock goes up, we want to move that stop loss up. But many times when we're seeing a chart like this, we want to set that stop loss very close to the 40-day moving average. So that if it does fall through that, we're safe and we're, we're we're secure there and that's definitely what the case is here you'll see that this stock moved above the 40-day average and if we had been uh, updating our stop loss we probably would not have had that happen uh, to us but that is definitely a sell signal so i i don't think that you want to be um in that stock right now <laughs> okay gt gbtc this is a very interesting by the way GPTC is the Greystone Bitcoin Trust, and these guys have about um, these these guys have about 
4% of all the Bitcoins in the world. So let's look at it. We had a buy point. Isn't that interesting? All right. So if you're interested in doing Bitcoin, this is kind of a nice, kind of a cool way to be in the Bitcoin business. So I there is a buy point on this one. Wow, it's the buy point is 1265. So write this down. It's B T, it's it's a G B T C, and the buy point is uh, let's see if I can give you any. Yeah, the buy point is 1249. 1249. So this is definitely just slightly above just slightly above the buy zone. So to calculate the buy range, we're going to take 12.49. We're going to multiply it times 5% and then add 100, and that's going to give us the buy range for this. So let's see I can, if I can do that in my head, right? So it's about 60 cents. So this is buyable up to about, oh, about a little bit over $12.49. So this is buyable right up to about $13. So if this thing settles a little bit, we might be right back into the buy range on this one. This is kind of interesting. There's been there's been a good activity on this. A lot of people are kind of concerned about potential inflation. And so they're going into Bitcoins. But Bitcoins are very hard to hold. This is a great way to trade Bitcoins. The GBTC, the uh, Greystone Bitcoin Trust. So uh, we are right almost at a buy point. And I hopefully, maybe I can put out a trade alert on that one. I know a lot of people are interested in um, in Bitcoin. Okay, so we have another one. Oh, this is what I had. This is what I had on my on my show here. I quit, thank you. This is MOBL. This is a mobile, uh, mobile iron. And I'm going to look at something really quick to see if, how we're doing on mobile iron. Now, this is, now normally... You want to trade stocks that are above ten dollars a share, but I kind of make a special deal on this show to trade low price stocks because I know that you know a lot of people are getting started and they don't have necessarily enough for a hundred shares of um, of Tesla. So the, oh look at that! Wow. Okay, it popped up. Well, you know I need to eat my own dog food. Here. I definitely had this one. This is excellent. It moved up strongly. It's off a little bit today. It's moved down, but it is, it, as you can see, it moved up strongly right before earnings. This is almost in a buyable range. This is one of the reasons why you do not want to buy the stock. Uh, you, you want to buy the stock after earnings. It had very, very good earnings. I'm looking here. The earnings were up 200%. So excellent, excellent earnings. And, of course, it went way up, and then now it's moving down today. But it's almost in the buy range. So this one, by the way, this might be a really good deal. The buy point on this one is 535. So 535 is the buy point. And the uh, the buy range, of course, is you take 535 and you multiply it by 1.05, giving you a 5% range on that buy. And uh, so that's gonna that's gonna be coming out at about 25 cents. So it's buyable up from about 535 up to about um, up to about 560. That's going to be about your buy range. I'm just doing that in my head. Obviously, you could have to do that with a calculator better than I would, but it looks like it, it reported well, and this looks like it's set up very nicely to move higher. So it's in a stage one consolidation. This is excellent. Uh, this is this is a stage one consolidation. This is definitely when they have their most power. So mobile iron is definitely a watch list. If it comes back into the buy range, it's extremely close. It's like nine cents. It's nine cents above the buy range. Uh, this is a this is a this is a buy. Um, this is a this is a buy. If you if you're interested, this is a low price stock that might do quite well. But if you do buy this one, be very careful. Make sure you step your stop loss because the relative strength on this one is relatively weak at sixty seven. Now it. It does look, one of the things that's very, very bullish on this is that the 40-day line moved above the 200-day line, uh, indicating that there is very lot of interest. Now, another interesting thing about mobile iron, and I want to point this out, is for a cheap stock, it has a lot of fund interest. The fund interest on this one is at 47%, which is really excellent. So put this one on your, uh, on, on your, on your watch list. I'm probably going to have this one on my watch list, and I may add this to Jim's low-price stock portfolio.
So again, um, I'm going to be making a special website that uh, that members can go in and take a look and see how I'm trading that low price uh, stock portfolio. So and it'll be updated automatically if I get all these programming things right. So hopefully that works. Um, but thank you so much for that question on on mobile iron. This is one of my particular favorites as well. So uh, here we go. Uh, how's KL looking? Came down a bit this week. Okay. Kirk KL is an interesting stock because it's one of the best gold stocks out there. The other one, the other really good gold stock being Franklin, Nevada, FNV. But let's look at how they did this week. I'm going to look at the daily chart on this one. Now, normally I'd look at the weekly chart, but I just it would summarize this. But I want to look at the daily chart. So it is it moved out down a little bit. Let's look at that. Um, let's look at that chart really quickly here. Um, yeah, it is in a. It's in a. It's in actually. It's in a. Um, it's in a profit taking zone. What's happened is there was a cup. It came to a buy point at forty four twenty three, and then it moved up smartly from that buy point. It 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 exceeded the twenty percent uh, profit taking rule. And by the way, there's the twenty percent rule, and that is if a stock moves up after a buy point on a on a on a on a strong base like a cup. And it moves up 20%, you want to possibly consider selling it and taking your profits. That is the 20% rule. Um, yeah, so it, it's right below the it's it's very extended right now. It's probably not a buy. It was more of a buy basically when I was talking about it kind of more, uh, basically earlier on here in July, about mid-July, it was a tremendous buy. It's a little bit extended now, and I think that you know we might want to wait until we get another, uh, another, uh, um, another strong uh, chart pattern. Uh, but right now, it's extended. It's still a great stock. It's just that buying at these um, at these bases, cup with handler, cup uh, or cup, gives you a, a more security in that it's going to move. It's going to settle there, and it's going to move up front uh, higher. Uh, higher from that point, so that's the reason why you, you're. I'm always talking about these tr these patterns. It's so important uh, to do that. Okay, on semiconductor, interesting company. This these guys are based in um, uh, in Tempe, I believe, Arizona, and, and uh, they are one of the many very strong semiconductor companies. This is an okay chart. It's not stellar. It's a relatively inexpensive company. So let's look at the chart here real quick. On, on semiconductor, it's down a little bit today. I just want to see if they've made their earnings. Okay, yeah, they, they reported unfortunately some some disappointing earnings in March 31st. Uh, they were down 77 percent, so that's part of the reason that I'm seeing it back off. There's definitely some selling activity here. Nothing out of the ordinary, but uh, I think that there's better places to go in the semiconductor uh, market right now. Uh, it did move above. Uh, so this is this is this is very bullish. I think what you want to might might want to look at as opposed to on semiconductor is a company that uh, I'm kind of I, I'm I'm kind of uh, highlighting today, and I want to show you the chart pattern on that one. And that is this company Diodes Incorporated, which is based here in Plano, Texas, beautiful Plano. Um, and I want to show you the chart on that one so you can see it. And this one is better because it has a better chart pattern, uh, and it's 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 moving it's moving. Uh, and it, even though it did pull off a little bit today, this has a very much better chart pattern than on semiconductor. It's a little bit more expensive. It's at fifty one ninety three, but this is one you might want to look at if you're interested in that semiconductor space. And you're, and this is a this is a this is a uh, stock that's right below its breakout. So if it breaks out, it, it could be quite good uh, as well. Um, DAO. Um, let me look to see about DAO. See if I can give you a read on that. Uh, DAO is interesting. Okay, I don't know this company. It's cool stuff. Like, okay, China based. Uh, this is a little bit. This is a little bit. Uh, okay, I, I know who this is. Yeah, this. I I would be really careful buying this one, even though the chart's not bad. Let's let's show the chart here. I'd be a little bit careful buying this one. The China software companies are tough because they're really hard to value. Um, and many times they don't follow generally accepted accounting principles. But it's got a 98 relative strength. That's very good. 
uh, at 42. Uh, it's got railroad tracks here. So this possibly is going to be punching higher. Absolutely. This, this, is, this, may, be, this may be moving higher. Uh, I'd like to see another. I mean, uh, basically, the buy point on this one was 2907. That was the last buy point on it. Um, and it had a cup with handle uh, pattern first stage. So that's good. You know, I would wait until we saw a second stage pattern, like a like a double bottom or a three week tight. I think this is potentially setting up, but it's not there yet. So, um, you know, it, this is this is setting up. Well, it seems as if I have gotten a low battery warning on my TikTok. So hopefully you can see me here. I'm in low battery mode, and hopefully I'll be able to recharge this thing soon, sooner rather than later. Um, by the way, if you're having trouble seeing me on TikTok. It's super easy to see me on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Stealth Training 4 is where I'm at. So uh, there you go. Um, interesting. Okay, so TDOC uh, went super down, but after merger is going up again. We're getting strange. Yes, it did. I exited TDOC, as you know, if you've been watching my portfolio, I exited TDOC on Friday of last week, and I did that because uh, – you know, I had seen I I I didn't want to violate the twenty percent rule, and that's why I sold on Friday. Remember, you always want to be kind of careful when a stock has made a, a, an increase like TDOC did. Uh, you want to be careful about preserving those profits. And one of the ways you can do that is by put either pushing up your stop loss or going, um, you know, or or going uh, long, uh, going longer on that. So. Um, there you go. So let's look at TDOC here. I want to show TDOC here really quickly. Oh, goodness. I'm having all kinds of issues. Oh, there we go. All right. So let's look at TDOC. And that's also based here in the Dallas area. It's in beautiful Louisville. Yeah, it violated, it violated the, the, the it violated the 40 day. It's funny when I'm out of these stocks, I'm really out of them. And I don't follow them as much, so I don't know everything that's going on. The relative strength dropped, yes, uh, right after earnings. See, this is that it, it, it moved up very nicely right before anticipating earnings. This is one of the reasons why you want to always consider selling a stock right before earnings. And this is really a good habit to get into because it ran right up to earnings, boom, and the earnings were they were good, but they weren't good enough and it fell and as you can see it fell all the way from the reason i sold this is you can see this little green in here that is the 20 percent mark that's the profit taking zone i took profits there and then we fell back down to earth so this might might be a good might be a good buy but it's almost in the the stop loss the red zone so this is probably a sell. I have to tell you, this is probably a sell. But, you know, if you're following the rules, the 20% rule and the 8% uh, stop loss, you can trade these things very successfully. Uh, so it's it's not hard to trade them very successfully if you follow the rules uh, when you're trading them. And I try to go over many of the rules on this show as much as I can. Uh, thoughts on Datadog after earnings? Well, let's see about Datadog. I think we just the market's just closed. So um, we may, I don't know if there's been a reaction. It's really tough on the day of earnings. Typically, the, yeah, oh, no, it looks bad. Sorry about this. I hope that nobody was in this one. If you were, I think you got kind of skinned there. This is, again, another reason why you want to be very, very careful when you are going through earnings. You typically want to sell right before earnings and then see what happens and then buy back. Obviously, this is a case where a lot of people just bailed on it. They had great earnings. Look, three up 350%, but everybody sold in place. So this is showing me that uh, that this is possibly, you know, people are bailing out of uh, bailing out of Datadog right now. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll regain. It, it, hopefully it'll regain the 40-day line. But right now it is definitely not. <laughs> it's not in that situation. All right. So, uh, okay. So, just got, okay. Uh, let's see. What do you think of GE? <laughs> well, GE is a real interesting case. For everybody out there, I just anecdotal anecdotal thing I want to tell, share with you. I went to a very small college undergraduate in Maryland called Washington College. And 
Larry Culp was one of my classmates. He is now the CEO of of um, Washington of 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 General Electric. He has done far better than I have in this world, and he's a super nice guy, and he's a great manager. Uh, but I don't know if even Larry can pull this one out. It just GE needs to be broken up, and and I just I just think it is. But if there's a man to do it, it's Larry. He is super great manager. But this this chart is not viable, folks. It is terrible. This is the 200-day moving average, and there's the death cross right there. And it's moved below that. I wouldn't even look at this thing until the 40-day line has moved above the 200-day line. And that doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. You really have to go back almost, you know, you know, almost to the beginning of the year and when it was selling at 1326. Unfortunately, you know, I wish that GE was better. Um, I think what they used to, their, their slogan used to be, they bring good things to life. Is that is that what they used to say? I don't think this is a very good thing with General Electric. So sorry about this. Uh, General Electric just, it's it's just going through a lot of struggle. Now, here's the thing, and, and, I, and I, I responded to uh, a question on, TikTok the other day, and it was about it, it was about buying a stock, you know, sort of trying to buy a bargain stock of a company that you've heard of, and it's so gr super great. This is really dangerous because what happens when a company goes bankrupt, even a big company, is the first people that are wiped out, of course, are the equity holders, and that's the stockholders, and that definitely. And I showed the example of what happened in nineteen in two thousand and nine, and I don't know if this maybe before some of your time, but you weren't looking at the stock, but General Motors went under. And when General Motors went down, yes, it was reorganized. We still have General Motors cars, but guess what? Everybody that invested in the stock, at least in the old stock, was wiped out. So not something you want to be doing, doing too often, unfortunately. Um, oh, BAC calls. Okay, let's look at BAC. I don't think Bank of America is going to go under. Now, the banks are a little bit different than the industrial companies because this Bank of America Corporation is definitely – in the category of too big to fail. So uh, I doubt this would ever go out of business. But as an equity holder, you might get skinned on this one. I still don't like the banks a lot. I just don't like them. I think there's just other places that you can put your money that you're going to make more money. But let's look at this chart. The Bank of America is trading right above $25, $26.10. Uh, but the 40-day, the 50-day uh, moving average is well below the 200 so it, it's just not viable, even though there's been a lot of interest in it. It's true. Uh, Warren Buffett, who loves the banks, and, and the reason he loves the banks is because he can wait 20 or 30 years, and unfortunately, I can't. So I don't typically like the banks in this in this environment right now. Uh, but, um, you know, I just don't think that you're going to win with calls on this one. Yeah, you might win a little bit, but this there's just better places to be than Bank of America Corporate. It's just my, my humble opinion. I just don't think it's, you know, I think this one is potentially a, a short, but it's not a time you want to short anything, not an upward trending market. So uh, just, um, you know, oh, hey, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Happy Friday to you, too. Thanks for watching me on um, on TikTok, uh, uh, not TikTok, on, on uh, Twitch. Thought on lumber doubling, lumber play. Hmm, I don't know. I I have to get back to you on that one. Uh, I, I think I think I think I have to have to get back to you on that with those kind of plays. Um, you know, there's no reason to do you know that much exotic stuff right now. There's so many good opportunities in the market right now. You don't have to look that far. So uh, I'm going to try to to uh, to to give them to you. Uh, are you able to? Uh, <laughs> are you able to start a hedge fund that trades currencies and stocks? Well, typically, hedge funds can can trade anything they want. They're just basically a fund of money, and and uh, typically the way it works is that twenty percent of the increase typically goes to the hedge fund manager. So, yes, you can do that. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, currencies are a strange thing. They're heavily manipulated, and uh, you know you can make a ton of money in the currency uh, area, but uh, you know in terms of a hedge fund, you know I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's where you want to be. Um, okay, question on Ford. Ford is an interesting company because I do think it's one of the few companies out there that potentially in the short term could possibly be somewhat of a competitor for Tesla um, because they do have the manufacturing capability and they do have 
uh, they do have the capital actually, but their but their stock is doing horribly. But it's been moving up. And by the way, if it's got a cup and handle, this is a buy signal. By the way, everybody, I just want to put this out there. Currently, um, currently Ford is trading for six dollars and eighty seven cents. So. This is actually an improving chart. It's not a great chart, by the way. It's not. It's not a great chart. But if this moves above the 200-day moving average, I'm going to come, become a lot more interested in this stock. It looks as if we have a buy point on this one, and the buy point is 704. So we, we're right below the buy point. This Ford is buyable from 704 on up to 5% above that. So if we have... If if um, so, this Ford is actually a buyable stock, by the way, and it is a quote unquote penny stock at this point, <laughs> which is hard to believe, but it it looks like Ford is buyable at about seven dollars and four cents. So um, things are starting to look good for Ford. We have a cup with handle formation. This is this is excellent. So um, this might be, you know, instead of going into the stocks like Neo and stuff like that. Why not consider a real company like Ford that can actually make the product and has some potential in the electric vehicle market? By the way, the whole market for cars is going to change drastically in the next five years. There's going to be lots and lots of electric vehicles. And one of the areas that Ford's super great in is they're great in making those medium-duty trucks, which I think a lot of people are going to want. They can make the truck bodies, and once if they can get the, um, if they can get the software down, I think they might be a real winner. Uh, I, I definitely like Ford much better than General Motors or any of the German manufacturers. I think that it's a better company and potentially more profitable. So thank you so much for that question on Ford. I wouldn't have seen that if it hadn't been. See, and that's the thing. I get these great stock ideas for everybody that comes in and helps me look and gives me kind of trade ideas. Because there's always, here's one thing, folks, there's always money to be made in the market. In good market, bad market, doesn't matter. You can always make money in the market because there's always change, and and we make money on the change in the market. That's how you make money. By the way, if you want to continue making money, why don't you get on the subscribe to our free stock alerts? And it's real easy. All you have to do is go to DallasTradingFloor.com. Just put your name and email address in there, and you'll be on the list getting all the trade alerts as they come out. And this is typically how I'm trading it, and, and a little bit more in depth than just the show. Also, if you're on TikTok, and I have a lot of people on TikTok that um, I really appreciate, um, just go to my profile, hit the link. You'll be taken right to the um, right to the sign-up page for the trade alerts. So that's a good thing to do and to get on the trade alerts, um, so you can you can see how I'm trading it and possibly some suggestions. By the way, if you want to ask a question, uh, that's also super easy. I have a phone line. And, and if you if I don't answer, just leave a message, and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. My the the uh, Dallas Trading Floor Hotline is two one four two three three five zero eight seven. And if you want to ask a question, just go to the website www Dallas Trading Floor and list ask a stock question, and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer, just depending on how many questions I have. But I look at every one of them, and I really appreciate everybody coming in and giving me some great questions. All right, so um, ride the wave up. Yeah, well, you, you know what? We are in, a, as hard as this is to believe, we are actually, and, and I want to show you this chart because this, this shows something very, very important. There, When you have this situation, believe it or not, this is a very bullish chart. So I'm going to show you the Dow Jones spider that it that covers the Dow Jones 30. And what's happened in this is we have something that's very unique that is just popped up. And I want to show you this chart. You see this red line here? This is the 50-day moving average. And it's already it's coming and it's moving above the 200-day moving average. This is what they call the golden cross. And this means that at least until the end of the year. If this chart pattern continues, this is a very bullish pattern. So we, as hard as this is to believe with the COVID-19 thing, 
the economy shutting down and everything like that, we are going to see a bullish stock market probably at least until the end of the year. I know this is strange. Uh, you know, you wouldn't think of it with the news. I mean, you know, with the news, the world's coming to an end. But this is not what this chart tells me. This chart tells me that we are in at least a short-term uptrend. Very, very good time to be in the stock market. You can probably make some very good money right now. It's just that simple. Um, and whenever you get that situation, it, it's, it's, it's very, very bullish. So thoughts on BABA. This is an interesting stock. This is a proxy, essentially. It's Alibaba, of course, for everybody out there that doesn't know this. Uh, this is a proxy for the general, mar the Chinese market. Even with all the trade tensions, the Chinese stock market is recovering, believe it or not. Yeah. So it is something that, that is very interesting. Uh, the interesting thing about Alibaba is it's listed on the New York. It looks as if we've had, yeah, okay, so there's a bit of weakness there. Uh, yeah, we just, yeah, okay, so we just fell to the 250 line. We were in essentially a buy zone up to, this was buyable up to about $240 a share. We're at 252.10 right now. So we're extended above the buy zone, and it looks like it's falling back to earth. And as you can see on this chart, if you're looking uh, with me on uh, YouTube or, t or uh, Twitch or on um, Facebook, you can see how it moves right back down to this, to this, to this line, the the pivot being being here, and then one point and five percent above that is where this resistance is. So basically, I believe that the, in the short term, it looks like Alibaba is going to fall back to the uh, two forty one seventy four line, and we should see it probably bounce off of that. So I wouldn't recommend it in the short term. You might want to watch this one. This one, this is why it's so important, everybody. When you get ready to buy, even if everything is aligning correctly, you want to wait until you buy on an uptick because you want to buy as it's going up, not as it's coming down. Because sometimes you can get a stock when it's coming down and the stock will break down and unfortunately it will fall below some of the um, support. So that's why you want to be super duper careful when you are buying stocks. You want to go in with the best chart patterns at the correct buy point in the or buy range. And then you also want to buy an uptick. So it's kind of a checklist, that, but it's sort of like flying an airplane. You know, you get the checklist out, you make sure that all these things are happening and you're just going to increase your chances for success. So uh, that's what I'd like to put forward out there. So let's see, we have anybody else on uh, TikTok? Okay. I think the market might crash badly in October to April. Um, I wouldn't count it. I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it. And I'll tell you why I wouldn't bet on it. Uh, from my reading of the S&P 500, the spider, and also the diamond, that's the DIA, which is the um, Dow Jones, uh, which is the Dow Jones chart, uh, we are entering a, what they call a golden cross. No, I don't think we're going to have a crash between October and April. I, I just don't think we're going to have it. Now, that could change. But right now, from my reading of the charts, we are moving very strongly into, into that. Now, after November, I think all bets are off. It depends on what the stimulus is. But I think right now, based on the charts, we are in a bullish market. And you better be careful shorting anything because I do think we possibly are going higher. Well, thank you, for everybody, for, for taking a look. It's almost at an hour right now. Um, just wanted to um, reiterate about uh, the uh, Action Trade Alerts. To sign up for Action Trade Alerts, just go to www.dallastradingfloor.com. Just put your information in there. You'll be right on the chart. And, of course, it's all free. Also, if you are looking on TikTok, I have a link built in. All you have to do is to uh, go to my profile, hit that link, and you'll be in the in, you'll get all the action trade alerts as they come out. So very important. I had an excellent we had an excellent report on Apple, uh, how to trade it. I've issued that twice. I issued that first on Monday, and then I issued it yesterday too. But there's always opportunities in the market, and I try to cover them with the action trade alerts. So thanks everybody for taking a look. I will be back on Monday at 2:30 Central Time. Until then, I hope to see uh, you happy trading. And I will see you on Monday. Thanks for watching.